What's up, Nerf Virginia here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the new meta, basically. Talk about what Iris means for the meta and um, what I think the new meta is going to be. Um, once again, this is going to be my opinion. This is not fact. But the way I see it now is basically the meta is kill the enemy before you get killed. It's just like AoE them down before you get AoE down. Basically, it's going to be the meta. And I think most likely the most meta team like the team that you're going to see the most is this team right here um but fc shafrakin for anybody who's fc shafrakin so fc shafrakin fc iris fc rara um fc annie and bathory okay and so basically iris made it so first guardians pretty much doo-doo pretty much made them doo-doo uh except for rara and the reason why Rara isn't Dudu is because one, she's the fastest unit in the game with great AOE damage. Um, two, her passive is still really nice. The uh, the passive where she like blinds, not blinds, but reduces um, accuracy. That's still nice and comes into play. Um, but mostly because she's the fastest unit in the game, right? The the name of the game right now is going to be speed. So basically, the person with the fastest Rara, whenever you're facing someone, has the advantage by far. Um, and because you're going to be using FC Annie, well, because if you're playing the meta, um, you're going to be using FC Annie with Rara. It means that there are two turns. Her turn, meaning, um, well, I guess since aren't, people aren't going to be using, um, what, what are they called? Uh... Dragonites or First Bloods, uh, you don't have to worry about Wrath, but basically her turn and depending on the order, the turn before her turn or the turn after her turn, your rare is going to be immune to damage, meaning that um, she won't be able to get hit, so she won't proc Iris's passive, okay? And then on top of that, you're using Iris, which means Bathory, what her, her first attack won't pop um, the passive, so basically Rara whenever you're attacking it's going to be luck whether or not uh, the opponent hits your rara triggering the iris passive or not but there will be three attacks in which or three two turns and then bathory's first attack in which it won't proc um iris's passive right so that's why rare is going to be the one dragonite that you still see uh, but aside from that dragonites are out um and because dragonites are out and because there's so much AoE burst in this game, that means healers are out. There's really no point in having a healer because everything's just going to die too quick. This also means that the new break system, right? The elemental um, increase or uh, in elemental whatever increase where you can break more stones at once isn't going to be as game changing as we thought because people are just going to be dying on like the second round. No problem. Um... So basically, the name of the game, like I said, is just kill them before they kill you. So the way it's going to go is FC Rara, single target someone, or you can AoE and help you get crits and, and manage to get people low. But single target someone or AoEs gets them low. Um, so Fracken's passive is going to proc. For those of you who don't know, his passive, um, I'm going to show it right here, his passive Fear of the Abyss. So whenever they get, whenever someone gets to 10% or less HP, if they have less defense than Shafrakin does, they take, or not just them, their whole row takes 65% um, attack. So basically this counters Bathory's passive, which is why he's going to be in the meta. Um, anybody wondering if normal Shafrakin will make the cut or if you need FC Shafrakin, yes, normal Shafrakin uh, will make the cut because the biggest thing about Shafrakin is the passive and normal Shafrakin also has the passive. Of course, FC Shafrakin will be better. One is skill one is better for this because honestly, the heal, once again, isn't going to do much. I mean, normal Shafrakin's regular heal isn't going to do much because he's just going to die anyway. Um, also, the passive where a, he gets the passive where you're immune to damage for a few turns, I think, Shafrakin, um, which is obviously going to be amazing. So, um, yeah, FC Shafrakin is better. But basically, it's just going to be AoE down, and then with the Shafrakin uh, passive, you get past Tranquil. That's it. That, that's going to be the meta. 
Uh, if you don't have Shafraken, I think, like, this team plus Garf, that's what I'm using right now, because my Shafraken isn't 6-star. Uh, he's not invested in enough for me to want to use him in PvP. Um, I think this is also really good. Um, Garf just making your team a bit tankier, and then Garf just AoEing in the back row. He does pretty pretty dang good damage. And like I said, um, Rara is immune if you're using... So say the enemy has FC Annie and Rara. Your Rara can't target their Rara because she's going to be immune. And then, um, what's her name? Bathory is going to... Um, they're going to be immune to her damage on the first turn. So Garf is one, the one person that you can use on your first round to proc the Iris passive. Him and Annie. Um, but like, say if you use him, honestly, if he crits, he can um, he can pop the pop the Tranquil on um, on FC Rara, and then you're good to go. FC Rara, once you pop her Tranquil, um, it means that she will lose the. Um, what am I trying to say? She loses her passive that gives her that 100 speed. So if you can pop the Tranquil on the enemy rare, it means your rare on the second round will definitely go first, even if it's less um, speed usually. All right, so also thing to note is because speed is the meta, you're going to want four speed on all of your top row gear for rare if you can. And then if you get lucky for magic enhancement, you'll also get speed. Um, but you can't target one um, stat when it comes to magic enhancement because it takes more and more ore of mana every time you do it. Um, so it's really hard to do that. Also means anybody who got to fuse FC Rara got hella lucky. <laughs> they have an advantage off the bat. So that's basically it for the meta. That's going to be the meta. Um, but like say you don't see, you don't have some of these heroes. Um, like you don't have FC Annie or you don't have Shafraken or Garf. Um, some heroes that'll be good are Baraka, the black FC Baraka will be really nice. Basically anybody from that set, anybody from the set, um, what does the set do again? Anybody from the set, um, where they get basically damage immunity. I think Rochelle has that. Rochelle, Shafraken, Baraka, Otard, and that's all I can remember are from that set. Damage immunity is going to be great. Um, FC Illum will still be good. Because uh, FC Illum has the oh shit button. Um, where if they take a bunch of damage. Then she basically gets mana back. and or I mean uh, life back. And gets reduced damage for a couple turns. Also like I said Garf is good. I said he was good for his um, his back row AoE. But also Shafraken. Like I said his passive only works on people with less defense. And Garf can boost the defense of your team, meaning if your team has high enough base defense, um, not including his passive, like if then you add his passive and then it's possible that they'll have more defense than the Shafraken and his passive won't proc. Maybe. I don't know how his passive works, right? I don't know if his passive only works off base defense, like it doesn't matter, it doesn't take into account Garf's passive, or if it does, etc., etc., um, but yeah, I think that's it. That's all I want to say about the meta. Um, honestly, I feel like Exo's Heroes needs to balance the game better when it comes to damage. Um, what I mean by that is before First Guardians, and now that Ner First Guardians have the Iris counter, basically the name of the game, like I said, is just kill the enemy before they kill you. And it doesn't matter, aside from FC Illum, or aside from, I should say, damage immunity effects and, like, the Illum set, uh, FC set, where, like, they get the oh shit button, where if they take 70% of their health or something like that, then they get reduced damage and they get health back. Aside from those mechanics, no one is actually tanky, right? Like, Garf is supposed to be really tanky, right, and makes your entire team tankier, but Garf can get one shot, no problem. It's like, unless you block, or let's take Dagus for example. Dagus has one of the highest base defenses in the game. He has insane um, defense. But if he gets crit by, like, the, the Rara with the FC Annie, whatever, like, he can get one shot, no problem. Or um, a Bathory, if she has some plus attack from 
what's it called? Some plus attack from Monolization. She can one shot Degas. Like tanky characters aren't actually tanky, in my opinion. They're not tanky enough. Um, and one that makes it so like there's no point in using tanky characters uh, to a certain extent in PvP. And then two, it means there's no point in using single target DPS that much, right? Because why use regular Rudley, who's one of the best, if not the best, single target DPS in the entire game, if you could just AoE one-shot everybody with Bathory, or AoE one-shot everybody with Rara or Annie, right? So it kind of like, with the way they balance the game offensively versus defensively, it kind of kills the purpose of single target nukers and tanks because they're all just put to shame by aoe nukers right so i would like to see some balance with that in the future um whether they like i don't know come out with new mechanics where it's just like minus percentage damage from some character or something for your team or something anything because just aoeing people down is like kind of crappy like i really want to use rudley rudley's my favorite character but why would i use rudley when i could just use bathory or rara and just aoe everybody down all right anyway that's it before i go on even more of a rant please like comment subscribe emphasize on the subscribe i will see you next time peace